feel it, uh huh. I wanna feel it. I know it's late. I can't wait. Come on in, still away. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I know it's wrong. Hey, what's good, everybody? It's your man, it's your man Rico. What's up? It's Facebook, but I'm just on here just temporarily and, and, and trying to battle this wind out here. Dang, this is on MLK's birthday, January 15th. Y'all just looking at my newsletter. I, for those of you who wonder if I still write newsletters, I do. It's just in a shorter form, you know, just front and back. Very simple graphics, just me, just doing a little something. Because for me, it's all about uh, what's on my mind and how I put it down on paper. And uh, I, uh, this year, what I thought about as it relates to uh, the whole King birthday thing was, you know, something we've been thinking and been saying for years, but we just haven't come out, I guess, as a community and said it out loud. And y'all know me. I don't have a problem with saying things that really needed to be said out loud. And so I uh, I wrote this newsletter. I'm going to let y'all see it again. Oh, wait a minute. Ah. I wrote this newsletter here. Let's see. Wait a minute. I wrote this newsletter. I think I did it some time ago, but I decided to bring it out today and um you know here in dallas they're gonna have the annual mlk parade i'll probably be out there passing this newsletter out uh says uh it's in my opinion y'all remember that if you went to grand movie you know what I'm talking about and uh my mantra is rico the opinionist and it has all my information on the back and stuff but anyway it says uh mlk's dream destroyed black america we should have listened to Malcolm X. That's my cash apology. But anyway, I guess I'll give some context. I can read this to you or yeah. So I, I can read it to you if y'all want me to. Um, let's see. It's not that long. I just don't want to battle with the wind. But um, basically what I'm saying is you know Dr. King um Well, hell, let me just read it. All right. It says here, Although Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. went under the banner of a Baptist preacher, he was bigger than just being a Baptist preacher or even a a Christian preacher. He was a messenger. However, he did not start off as a messenger. He actually started off as a prop of sorts that was used to eloquently convey the message of social integration by the higher-ups in the black Baptist church community. Initially, Dr. King had handlers, some were not black, who gave him an approved script for a script or speech for the masses. The approved script for social integration given to Dr. King to read and to promote to the world was the complete opposite of Malcolm X's message of doing for self and self-determination. Which is why I say we as black Americans should have listened to Malcolm X instead. Unfortunately, Dr. King was very loyal to the black Christian elite of that day. He truly believed that he was doing the right thing by preaching, praying for the white enemy who beats you and spits on you. He truly believed that forcing white people to, hold on, but that forcing white people back then to allow blacks to enter their places of businesses to spend their money where they were not wanted was an intelligent thing to do. Dr. King also used uh, was used as a shield of sorts for cowards who are not men enough to stand before the world to say how they really felt about legalized segregation. Instead, they would write it down on a piece of paper and say, hey, Martin, hit him with this. Or, hey, Martin, I can't say this, but since you are already out front, say it for me. Dr. King took a lot of physical blows and even a stabbing for the cowards who often sought refuge in the background, even and even out of sight. However, something changed in Dr. King during the late 1960s. 
I think Dr. King began to experience God for himself and in the truest sense of the experience and felt himself being pulled away from the sheepish herd of Black Baptist Church of the Black Baptist Church and his leaders. As a result, after 1965, Dr. Dr. King received uh, another script, an actual divine script to read from. I think he received an order from someone much bigger than the church. Dr. King actually received his new marching orders from the same person or higher up that led Nat Turner, Marcus Garvey, and Malcolm X on their path to freedom for black people. Dr. King's mission changed completely after 1965 from that of social integration and civil rights to actual economic equality and human rights. He even began to publicly demand reparations for slavery. In my opinion, the psychological damage to the minds of most black Americans back then had already been done. Well, I guess better late than never. This now messenger, Dr. King, could not be tolerated by the white masses nor the black integrationists of that time. We all know the rest of the story. Today, these two groups tend to not only ignore, but they make sure that they never teach about the Dr. King, the awakened Dr. King or the awakened messenger after the year 1965. Damn, we should have listened to Malcolm X. So y'all, y'all pretty much know that those same two groups are the ones that still leading black people, you know, to the Democratic Party. Uh, they're the main ones who vote on. And I'm talking about these black elites, these uppity bourgeois black Democrats. You know, uh, uh, would say two no listen, right? Because he was on point those last two years. You're correct, bro. What's up, cousin? Cochise, what's up, man? David, what's good, man? And so. You know, those same black folks of that day, and, I, and I'm always talking to my friends and relatives, telling them that Dr. King was basically, he was a prop. He, um, he was pretty much plucked out. And he, by the way, y'all know he was like 15 or 16 years old when these old heads in the church pulled him up and said, hey, we want you to talk about this. And you know, he finished Morehouse uh, early and he got his Ph.D. before he was even he wasn't even 25. Or, he, was, he was a young guy. So therefore, he was easily manipulated, you know, thinking that he was doing something good. But we have to keep in mind you know, when we talk about racism, white supremacy, there are a lot of black people beginning even with W.B. Du Bois, who did not want total freedom from racism, white supremacy. What they wanted was you know, better treatment under racism, white supremacy. That's why, you know, a lot of these elites, you know, black Greeks, black boule, these people don't ever, they don't want freedom. You know, like when the Haitian, the Haitian people fought the French for independence and freedom. They don't want that. These groups of blacks, they want good jobs and racism. They want to be you know, a uh, uh, part of a board uh, or a CEO of a white plantation or I'm president of this or somebody's white company. They want an integration. And I've always said it's these black gays and black Greeks and these black elites, which all kind of intertwine. I know I have people who I'm friends with who like me who are part of black Greek led organizations, but I'm not going to ignore history because, you know, you you joined or got initiated to these organizations. Because there's a lot of cool people who are black Greeks, but I know if they were to think on the lines of Malcolm X, if they were to think on the lines of Marcus Garvey, their black Greek-led organization uh, would ostracize them because they were not created to be free men and free people. They were there to be a separate class away from the oppressed blacks. Did y'all hear what I just said? So poor Dr. King... He was sent out front to do all of that. While you had the, the by his little Greek letter friend, there was Kappas, Alphas, Qs, it was, it was all around him. Bayard Rustin was the, his main uh, mentor or his main person who would like teach him, hey, hey try this, try this non-valley route. Uh, you don't need to just, you know, let's try to reach the hearts of the enemy. Uh, let's try social integration because Bayard Rustin was a flaming homosexual. He, he didn't want to be away from white men. If y'all do the history of Bayard Rustin, who was Dr. King, one of his main speechwriters, one of his main, you know, people around him, he wanted to be literally in the bedroom with white men. 
so much so that he was caught in a park in 1956 or 7 in a parked car with two white men, both of them running a train on him. Y'all look up Bayard Rustin. And so Dr. King, he really didn't know. He thought he was doing the right thing and he was used by these two groups of blacks who wanted just jobs. They wanted to be judges and politicians in this racist system. They didn't want to fight for independence for blacks. Did y'all hear what I just said? No, it's not, I'm not saying this for y'all to go when y'all see an Omega, when y'all see an Alpha, when y'all see a member of Cap Alpha Psi or in this world and start looking at them cross-eyed because they don't know their history. They just, all they know is what they've been initiated into. So you don't hold this against them. Uh, you, you don't hold this against our black fraternity, or black Greek brothers and sisters, even though they don't, I don't think that they really view all of you know, themselves as part of the black community, like the black race, that I think they believe they view themselves as a separate group. And that can be debated all day long. But I don't want us to go and start looking at them sideways. Because they're, they're, not, they're not in their soul and their hearts bad people. They just joined something they really didn't know much about. And so every time there's been someone like a Malcolm X or Marcus Garvey, or, or Minister Farrakhan trying to say we want to fight for freedom has always been a black Greek that said no what's wrong with old master ain't nothing wrong with that we's law abiding that's what W.E.B. Du Bois said that W.B. Du Bois said that to Marcus Garvey we's law abiding citizen and he wasn't even all black he was biracial but he was a member of Alpha Phi Alpha and they was just part of the boule he was one of the founding members of the boule and the NAACP so they, they didn't want to have African independence or black independence. And you still have that today. And so poor Dr. King, when he ran into a real one like a Malcolm X and others who were speaking like Malcolm, you know, he was very eloquent, he was intelligent, and he, and he became conflicted. Of course, they were like, no, that's not the way. That's not the way. We should go this way. But everybody knows that freedom ain't free. And people are afraid of it. And so all these people that y'all, that y'all, a lot of us like to uh, celebrate these so-called black celebrities and these black politicians like, what's this old, um, uh, y'all know the ones that y'all like, be it the, the uh, Michelle Obamas and the Barack Obamas and the and Al Sharptons and the and, uh, to Lucy Coates and all these people, they, don't, they have no interest in black freedom. They, they like the positions. No, they like working for MSNBC. They like getting white Democratic corporate donor monies to tell these speeches to black folks, you know, about, you know, yeah, you know, racism, racism. But let me tell y'all something. No, it's funny when I hear these these black feminists, these little young black feminists on these college campuses and and, and even the old ones, the ones who call themselves Democrats and liberals, none of them ever used the word white supremacy before Donald Trump's election. See, people like me who always read and, and followed the scholars, Dr. John Henry Clark, Dr. Francis Cresswelting, Dr. Julia Harris, Dr. Joy Leary, Dr. Um, uh, ben Yakahanan, Dr. Um, uh, who else? Dr. John G. Jackson and all the scholars before then, Dr. Ivan Van Sernema, Chancellor Williams, Dr. Chancellor Williams. See, we already understood about racism and white supremacy white supremacy brother Neely Fuller but see a lot of these folks that became quote woke only when Trump became you no know, decide he wanted to run for president I don't trust none of them motherfuckers because I was already there I was already there we were already talking about white supremacy when I was a kid at Grambling State University not a kid but a young man we were already talking about white supremacy. All these new folks that, that be all on TV, these so-called black folks, Mark Lamont Hill, uh, Eric Michael Dyson, and all these folks that y'all think is so cool and so intelligent, they never mentioned white supremacy. Matter of fact, Mark Lamont Hill attacked Dr. Francis Kress Wilson because of her stance on LGBT. The little, I'm not even going to cuss today. It's Dr. King's birthday. No, y'all need to watch out who these boule people are. They have no interest in black freedom at all, at all. They have no interest in the black collective. Only if you are a black boule or a black Greek or a black elite, then they'll fool with you. And that's and I'm sick of it. I'm just like I'm, I guess I should be acting differently because 
Hey, Molly, sweetheart. Hey, girl. Because I have a master's degree and two, two bachelor's degrees. I guess I should be acting separate from my people, but I don't because I'm a black dude. You know, I grew up in the inner city like most folks did, but my degree didn't make me. I made the degrees. Y'all understand? So I, when I think about Dr. King, my, my, my position on him changes, but it still remains the same that we should have listened to Malcolm. Because um, when Malcolm X, if we had listened to Malcolm, y'all pay attention, and not listen to these, these Katanji Brown Jackson blacks, these, these Barack Obama biracials and Michelle Obama blacks and all them kind of black, the boule, Greek, high elite blacks, we would be what the Jews are in America today. We would be what the Asians are in America today. We would be what the Hispanics are in America today. We would be what the LGBT is in America today had we listened to Malcolm. But then we listened to Dr. King who was heavily influenced by those black church leaders slash Greek slash boule black elites. And that's why we have all these problems going on. We act like we can't seem to you know, know what's going on. We can't seem, we, can, we act as if, we act as if we can't seem to um, solve the problem. And, and we have to, we can't always look at, <coughs> look at just white folks. We know, excuse me, we know white folks going to do what they, they're going to do what they're going to do. But we have to, we have to start looking at these black folks who are selling us out even as we speak. Making these side deals with corporations. That's how Jesse Jackson got down. You know, they used our black trauma and our black hurt to try to threaten white corporations. So they got little jobs here, uh, money sent to their little nonprofits. That's what they did. It's all been it's all been recorded, but we won't read it. Because since they're on these white mainstream on TV stations, that's who y'all believe got all the good sense. And that's not true. We got a lot of folks in these streets who are really fighting. Now they don't have the corporate jobs. They don't have the white corporate funding or backing. <coughs> no, they don't. And and it's certainly your Negro preacher ain't worth a damn. I don't give a damn who your preacher is. He ain't worth a damn. If he ain't talking about freedom, independence, your preacher ain't shit. Name him. I tell him he ain't shit. If he preaching from that Bible, he ain't shit. He's the same preacher. He is the same preacher that was allowed to walk across that plantation with, uh, without barely being stopped and asked, hey, where you going, boy? Because the, pre the preacher is an actual an officer of white racism, white supremacy. He is a soldier. His job is to keep black folks talking about that pie in the sky by and by. Yeah, he'll let you get upset, but he's the first one. When a sorry ass politician want to come to your church, he accepts, he accepts an envelope so he can come talk to you. You know, and it's a shame that when people actually, when people actually get the, get the message from God, they're the ones that devil takes out. Y'all don't even believe that, do you? If Tupac had allowed to live, it would have been a revolution in hip hop. If Malcolm X had been allowed to live, it would have been a revolution. Had Dr. King been allowed to live, it would have, it would have been a revolution. Tavis Smiley wrote a book that's entitled Death of a King. He talked about how doc, during Dr. King's last two, two years, maybe that last year or two, how he was considered one of the most hated men, not just in America, but in black America. When Dr. King changed his message from let white people bust you in the head with milkshakes, bite sick dogs and bite you in your ass, let cops beat you all across your mouth and your face with the billy clubs, and he started saying, hey, where is our check? Where our money? Did you know the masses of black Americans, that's when I said in my letter, the most of the psychological damage had been done, they turned on Dr. King, even his so-called friends, all the black Greeks that was around him. The only one black Greek friend that, he, that stayed with him to the end was Ralph Abernathy. Even Ralph came out with a book that wasn't very flattering about Dr. King. But he came back, you know, he kind of apologized for it. He was just hurt. But the rest of them, you know, Andrew Young, Jesse, all of them, Bayard, Rest, Bayard Rustin, they, they weren't his friend. They didn't like him because they were trying to get the money 
for themselves. Dr. King started, you know, talking like Malcolm. I want the money for our people. You gave these white folks, these farmers, all these low interest or no interest loans. But you tell the black farmer that you need and the black man to pull himself up by bootstraps. You know, that's when Dr. C, they don't never show these videos of Dr. King. How come they don't ever show Dr. King 1967, 1966, 67, and uh, yeah, 60, beginning of 68, Dr. King? Because they're not here to empower any more black males and black girls to be on the right side of their people. They want black women to still be these angry, lesbian, ratchet, stupid, loud mouth ass feminist bitches. That's what they want them to be. And now, now look at them. The so-called empowered and educated ones, they ain't got no man. Don't nobody hardly like them. But then they get all on social media talking about how they hate black men. You better say you start loving black men, bitch, because don't nobody else want you but us. And don't tell me what black men do, because y'all outnumber us. Bad behavior. So, and then you'll give the spotlight to all the women. Fine. Brothers got their passport and they get the, get the hell on. You know, and I, and, I, and I woke up this morning to think about what I was going to say, but of course I never stick to the script. And I really felt badly, and, I, and I, every year I feel more and more, I just feel badly for Dr. King and what he must have gone through. Uh, it was like with the betrayal. All the people around him that he thought was his friends, but they were all a bunch of, if y'all went to school, junior high, high school, and they talked about in the literature portion of school, of history, they talked about Julius Caesar. And uh, Julius Caesar, how he walked in on a meeting with all the senators. And his best boy, we'll call it Abernathy of that day, his best boy was Brutus. And they, but he didn't know he was walking in on them finna kill him. And so they all had a, a dagger. They all took turns stabbing poor Caesar. But he was taking all them blows. But the death blow came from his partner, Brutus. Hence the saying, et tu, Brutus? That's what, that, I think that is what Dr. King felt. I think, I think that is what he felt. I think that, that sense of behavior, I'm sorry, betrayal takes a lot of us out. And so when I think about Dr. King's birthday and I think about his death, I just think sadness how, how we still do it today. We will sell each other out just to get a dollar instead of sticking together as an entire race and say, hey, let's do what the Haitians did. Here, let's do what the Native Americans tried to do. Let's, let's stick together and fight. But see, it's almost too late because that integration thing has really destroyed us. And a lot of most of us don't have any interest. Now we'll talk this shit on, on social media. It's easy. You know, it's easy to talk like that on social media. Look at these black colleges. You think if any one of these presidents of the black colleges thought like Malcolm, they'll be in the situation that they're in today? Of course not. Because if you look at our black universities, guess who the presidents are? 97% members of black Greek led organizations. That's why a lot of them are shit -os. Because they have that same, they have that same mentality. They want Whitey to come in and rescue them, and they want to make these deals with these white folks. When all they got to do is be men and women, and we we got forty million blacks. You mean you can't get forty million dollars out of forty million black folks? It's because you don't want to. You're sticking to the script. You know, it's, when you say let's get black on here, black folks get offended. That's why as a black business owner, you better not call it black nothing. The black folks are not coming. Now, as long as they think it's whites fronted or Asians or anybody else. Uh, Tino Lucian says, uh, let me see, Darren Palmer says, yes, sellouts. Tino Lucian said, talk about it, no action. Talk talk it, but no action. Tucson over two fought to free, free Haiti for real. Uh, real independence, an American Negro can't tell me shit. <laughs> okay, you about right. You know, because all of us can talk shit. But don't know about it. They, they don't about it. Really want to pay the price of freedom. Those people have died. They, they're, they're done. They already died. The folks who paid the price for us to have this so-called freedom. And then we have this weird ass parade every year. I guess celebrate Dr. King. But how about we celebrate Dr. King in the sense that where he was trying to go to. Dr. King in his last breaths was talking about reparations. How come we don't celebrate that? Because Dr. King has been co-opted by corporate white America and black bootlicks. 
We do. We have these weird ass parades every year. How come we don't do what the man tell us to do? You know, in the beginning when he was ignorant before he met God. Black boys and white girls, we all hold hand in hand. But see, he didn't know any better because he was fighting the scripts of the black gays and the black, and the black Greeks. But when he got that message, that true message from God that came just like it came to Nat Turner, that's when Dr. King started changing his mind. We can debate this shit all day long. We can. It doesn't make any sense. You got people who in place. You know how all these people be talking about representation matters. You have to get a seat at the table. Well, we got so many blacks that sitting at the table. Them Negroes don't say a word. All they do is, uh, y'all pass the cornbread. Ain't no more gravy left in that boat. Y'all got some more spaghetti. You ain't sitting at the table. You got all these blacks who are judges, lawyers. You got all these blacks who are sitting on all these various boards. And they ain't benefited the masses worth the shit. All it does is benefit them so they can get these little pseudo four ass awards from NAACP and TV One Honors and BET Honors and all this shit. But still, the masses of us are not making it. And, and again, unless you do have what's called a Haitian revolution, racism and white supremacy ain't going nowhere. But we don't have to make a deal with it. Or people don't have to make a deal with the white races just so they can get their, their crumbs off the table at the expense of the masses of our, our, of our people. That's right, Darren, black gatekeepers, they're still here. But one thing I like about it that's, that's making these black gatekeepers mad, Darren, is the internet. Because we got a lot of voices other than theirs. Because at first, the only people you could hear on, hear on TV was theirs. On MSNBC, CNN, they do special reports, documentary. But now we have the Internet with my voice. You got the brothers from the Black Manosphere's voice. And it's just tearing their asses up that they can no longer be the voices that black people hear. And guess what? Black people are listening to my voice. They're listening to the uh, uh, people like T. Hassan Johnson. They're listening to T. brothers like Torian Rain. They're listening to a brother by the name of TD Hip Hop. They're listening to who else? Uh, Doctor, what's the brother name? Doctor Ron Neal. Uh, Doctor Tommy J Curry. They're listening to uh, brother Obsidian Ali. Obsidian Radio. See the black gatekeepers. You know that that the internet is opening up where they can no longer be the voice. And guess what? Black folks are listening to them, and they're mad about it. So much so that, uh, who's that, Eric Michael Dyson and uh, Mark Lamont Hill, they got a whole whole, whole show on, on, on YouTube. It's a whole video. When they, I guess they're part of this, this new Grio politics website, YouTube channel. And they're talking about how they just explain how mad, how mad they are that the mass of black people are not listening to their types anymore. They're going to YouTube and find the real voices of the people on the grounds, you no know, people like Professor Truth and uh, the Black Authority, people like that. That's who that's who black folks are listening to, and it's affecting politics too. You know, the Democratic Party hates that the black people, particularly black men, are not listening to these black gatekeepers. That Tiffany Cross brought lost her job on the plantation talking shit about black men and that we how we should be voting. No, those days are over. And that's why I really appreciate the Internet in that regard. Now, of course, they use the Internet and YouTube and Instagram and TikTok with some foolishness. But still, when it comes to these black gatekeepers, these these uh, these voices that uh, <laughs> that they thought were the voices of black people, well, they're being drowned out by the real voices of black people and the boules and the uppity blacks and the, the black Greeks and all of those. They, 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 they feel some type of way about it. Because yeah, for a long time. You know, and if you want to hear a voice like Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad or a voice like Sister Shahrazad Ali or Minister Farrakhan and others, you have to watch white shows like Phil Donahue and Sally Jesse Raphael because the black talk shows wouldn't have them on there. Now, Oprah had some white racists on there, the Klan in the first year, but she never had none of the black scholars on there. These black gatekeepers, y'all know who they are. But anyway, um. I want to close by saying, you know, we should have listened to Malcolm because uh, and I'll do with all due respect to Dr. King. You know, I'm glad that he finally heard the true voice of God and he began. He changed his message 
So much so that he even apologized. He said, damn, I led my people to a burning house. And how come we never read that and take that for what it really means? I made a mistake. Meaning I was listening to these, these lying ass integrationists, these homosexuals who want to live with white men and live with white women and get good jobs under white racism. That I thought I was actually helping my people to move forward in this country. Actually, what I did was, and today is the day that, that if you look around, I put, peop- I put my people in a permanent underclass. Because all the, and every, every Negro that was able to move to the suburbs stopped teaching his child about racism. Stopped teaching his child about his Africanness and her queenness in the Ivan Byrne Sedema sense, in the Brother Ashwa Kwesi sense, in the, in the Dr. Ben Yakahanan sense. We stopped doing that. That's why a lot of black kids are so confused. We stopped, we stopped, you know, teaching when we became integrated. We stopped teaching about ourselves and our struggle. We start telling, we start telling blacks, other blacks, you know, you blacks with the big microphones invited everywhere to speak. We know, um, there's no really no such thing as black or white. We all one race. God dog. <laughs> no fool. There is a such thing as black, white. Hispanic, Jew, and all that. Didn't y'all see all the shit that Joe Biden passed? He passed something for Jews. I thought we all, I thought we was all one race. He passed an executive order for LGBT. And I know that's black ones too, but guess who that benefits? White ones. The black LGBT need to get a clue. You black. You're black. Just like how they pass laws for, for gays. They're white first. Y'all ain't never read the statistics where y'all haven't noticed that for the first, you no, know, for years. Black gays were still dying of AIDS while the white ones was getting all this money for help. Y'all didn't pay attention to that, huh? Yeah, we all, it don't matter, it's black gays too, but they still black. So we gonna get this one day. And so y'all ain't never noticed that the Hispanics got executive orders from this president that y'all love so much. The first week, Asians got anti-hate crime bill. Uh, Ukrainians, white folks and Jews over, over in Ukraine. Got sixty billion dollars, but every time we mention fucking reparations for a debt that's actually owed, shout out to Dr. King and his speech. What we need to do a study. Uh, we need to first put together a, a HBQB oil forty four forty four D oil uh, study HB something study to, to see the effects. When you got a black person with last name Smith or Davis, right then and there, goddamn it. That's the study. You know, and, and the black person with a white Jesus on their wall on their church, that's the study. So what kind of study are you talking about? But everybody else don't need a study. All they need is the, the signature from this president that y'all love. So this is what Dr. King, yes, he did. He contributed to this. And at the last minute, he tried to make amends, but it was too late. They took him out. It's unfortunate. And when one of these days we're going to get it, Malcolm X, Malcolm, like y'all say, Jesus is the way. In actuality, Malcolm X was the way. And look at our neighborhoods. Look at all these poor blacks. Look, you know, look, look at the mentality. I mean, we, we still will talk crazy or try to hurt somebody else black. And we tell we think first before we, we think first before we attack a Caucasian or anybody else who does us any harm first. We, we wait, we think about it. We think about the laws and the law that could be called on us. We think about all of that. When we come to somebody black, we don't care. We go right in. Put me in jail, mother lover. I don't care. I died this mother lover. Oh, yeah, when it comes to somebody black. So, yeah, Dr. King, I forgive you, man. You ain't know no better. I forgive you, Dr. King. It's cool. You know, but I just want you to know that, yeah, man, you can, you and, those others really contributed to black people being permanent underclass. This could be changed, but you know, a lot of us really, a lot of us with the good jobs and the big big houses and swimming pool think there's no more racism. Except when that when that when that son gets called the N word around his all his white friends. Who knows? Maybe next year we'll get it. We'll get the picture. What's up, y'all? So maybe next year it'll be different. But this year it's the same old same old. Everybody else is getting money. 
they're getting laws all out the backs of blacks. The original, the original oppressed, the original attacked, the original suppressed. But if we mention any of those things, oh, that was in the past. Oh, you need to get over it. Pick yourself up and you, know, you can do whatever you want. But no other group has to be ridiculed or attacked that way when they mention any, any minute part of any suffering that they did at the hands of white folks. Because they didn't suffer at our hands. We didn't do anything to anybody. But the Asians would get, was able to get a hate crime bill off the assumption or the push narrative of black people attacking them. When we know it was a white man that went into that, that, that uh, me love you long time uh, massage parlor. And, sh- and killed all them, them Asian women. They show one video of what looked like a black dude that pushed an Asian chick down outside of an apartment building or hotel. They ain't look like no black dude. All of a sudden, oh, they're hey, they're, they're attacking blacks. I mean, they're attacking Asians. These black people. I said, wow. And guess what? These sorry black Democrats y'all keep voting for, they went right along with it. Well, we need to stop this anti-Asian Asian hate. And it's so interesting. And all of us know this wasn't true because every every other Negro neighborhood has a Chinese store in it, a Korean corner store in it. They've been there talking crazy, saying the N-word and say, what's up, my brother? What's up, my nigga? All of that. <laughs> and y'all sit here and let y'all y'all elected black officials. Use your vote. Use you to help push an anti-Asian crime, crime hate crime bill on the backs of this false narrative of black folks. Dr. King, I forgive you, man. You ain't know no better. You tried that last. You really tried it. Tried to correct it. But anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and go and go. Y'all know, I, I, if you see me tomorrow in Dallas, the parade is like from 10 to 4, 10 to 2, uh, and down, up and down, MLK. Y'all know where the Martin Luther King Center is and Fair Park and all that. If y'all see me out there, say what's up. I'll, I'll, I'm going to try to make it out there tomorrow and pass out these flyers. Just say what's up. Um, and, uh, I have a, I, I, and I have a book. Uh, tomorrow is January 16th, for those of you, just in case, look at this video later on. But, yeah, I, um, uh, I do have my little short story that I still have that I think is still a very relevant topic. It's called The Greatest Pain Ever Felt, A Conversation with an absent biological father who, ne- who dared to be found or never wanted to be found. It's, it's a book that I wrote when I, you know, uh, a short story, it's 50 pages, I, I call it a short story, where I found out who my actual biological father was by accident. And then uh, at 22 years old, I was a student at Grambling at that time. I think I was a senior, junior or senior uh, at Grambling State University. And, uh, yeah, and I'll just go past all this other stuff. But I met him for the first time when I was 39 years old, August 8, 2008. Uh, what was it? Yeah, August. I'm sorry. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. December 25th, uh, 2008. Yeah, December 25th, 2008 is when I met him for the first time. And when I, went, when I knocked on his door and he came out, this is what he, he asked me. First thing he said was... Um, so, how did you find me? I said, you know, MapQuest, Google, blah, blah, blah. I looked up all the addresses that had his name, and then I, I found five of them, but his address was, happened to be the first one I went to out of the five addresses that I found. And he said, uh, I said, uh, Google, MapQuest, you know. He said, well, I have to give you an A for effort because I've worked aggressively over the years to prevent you from ever finding me. So, if you like a copy of this, it's only $10. Cash out me on the cash app that's on this uh, Facebook Live. It's dollar sign Rico D T H E, opinionist O P I N I O N I S T Rico the opinionist. Uh, if you decide to hit me at the cash app, please send me an email address, and I'll email it to you as soon as you get it. No, it's in a PDF format. Uh, check it out. You no, know, and if you decide to buy it, hey, um, email me. Let me know what you think about it after you've had a chance to read it. Happy birthday, Dr. King. I look, man. I forgive you. You didn't know any better. He was around a bunch of jackals and didn't even know it. But I'm glad that you were able to hear God's voice during the last two years of your life. And, and you tried to do the right thing, but the damage had already been done. Those Negro boule, up elite Negroes had already made the deal with white America to when you, when, when you get knocked off, they get the good, good jobs. <laughs> and that's what has happened. They still call them civil rights leaders. And that was such a fucking joke. 
Who the hell needs civil rights if you're supposed to be a full American? I understand it's immigrants. Why the fuck we need civil rights? We're supposed to be full Americans, right? See, Malcolm X was, I, I know I was supposed to be done, but I, I'm sorry, y'all. Malcolm X said was fighting for human existence, human rights. Those, those bootleg, bought-off bastards <laughs> talk Dr. King and talk about some shit called civil rights. And, we, and we've been left as a permanent underclass because of fucking civil rights. Now, we had gone and fought for independence for human rights. We had the same rights as white folks in this country. Did y'all know when every immigrant comes over here, they don't get civil rights, they get white rights? I mean, as far as voting and all that, we're the only group in America. Now, we've been here before every immigrant has ever come over here. We've been, we were here first. <clears throat> all the time. Three, four hundred years. <laughs> But I, we're our, our <laughs> hold on a minute. We're the only group who still has to have their voting rights voted on every 25 years by the, and no, by, the, by the House and the Senate. No other group, even if they're new immigrants that come over, they don't ever have to have any fucking rights of any kind voted on. And y'all still think this shit is right? Y'all still think this shit is freedom? As long as we have this shit called civil rights, will be the permanent underclass. We didn't need no goddamn affirmative action, per se. What we needed was black independence and a black, to, a black collective plan to be one unit in this country like everybody else. But that doesn't work for the elites who want good jobs with white folks, who want to sleep and create mixed babies with white folks. That don't work for them. So, but anyway, I digress. Y'all check out my book. Oh, if not, if you don't want to buy the book, just hit me up. Shit. You know, a lot of this, uh, you know, sure it's free, but you know, if y'all like what you hear, hit your boy up on the cash app, dollar sign Rico the Penis. Y'all enjoy the rest of your king birthday. And uh, again, if y'all see me tomorrow somewhere in South Dallas at the parade, passing out these newsletters, hey, say what's up. We'll take a picture or something. Y'all be cool. See y'all next time. Peace. <laughs>